There is no shame in being new to the hobby of car audio and wanting to get the best performance that you can from your subwoofer or speaker or amplifier upgrade. Wouldn't it be nice if there were 10 things that you could know right off the bat that would help you get better results with your car audio system? What's going on guys? I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. I recently reached out to the community here on the channel to ask the question, what are some things that you wish you knew when you started Car Audio to get your guys' feedback? And that's what we're covering in this video. So right off the bat, Brian says, I wished I knew what a DSP was. And I have to agree with this one. The power of a DSP is so important for a Car Audio system. Now, what is a DSP? A DSP is a digital signal processor. And basically we take this device and we put it between our source unit or our aftermarket head unit and our amplifiers. And it allows us to fully tune and control the audio signal that's going to be sent to each speaker. This allows us to control time alignment or time delay. We can control crossovers. We can control equalization. That's important to note because a lot of times people get confused. They think that a head unit's gonna give them all that control that they need to tune the system. And that's not the case. You need to have that control control at each individual speaker and having the DSP allows you to do that. Now, the second thing I wished I knew before I got started in car audio was how to properly research what I was going to need for my vehicle. In today's day and age, vehicles are complex. And if you're doing something like upgrading a factory head unit to an aftermarket head unit, you're going to need different wiring harnesses. You might need an integration part that's going to allow your aftermarket head unit to talk to the data signal in your vehicle. When you're upgrading speakers, you're going to need particular speaker adapters. There's a lot of different parts that you need to research. Where can you find all of that in information. Well, a website that I like to use, and they also happen to be the sponsor of this video is Crutchfield. Now I've used Crutchfield for many years long before I started the channel. That's why I feel so good recommending them to you guys. And what you can do with their website is you can enter the year, make and model of your vehicle. And if they've done the research on your vehicle, you can see exactly what parts you're going to need in order to install these different aftermarket components. Additionally, their customer service team are people that know car audio installation. So if you guys have any questions along the way, you can call them up and they are there to help. If you wanna learn more about them and take advantage of a special offer for you guys car audio fabrication fans you can check out the link here on screen or down in the video description number three most of the music i wanted to listen to was bad and i think what this person means here is oftentimes the source music isn't really recorded optimally. And once you go to play this music on a high quality system, sometimes it doesn't sound very good. The bigger thing to be careful with here is we wanna make sure that wherever we are downloading our music from and whatever we are using as a source is a good quality file. If you're trying to use something like YouTube as your source for your music, you have to remember that YouTube is going to downgrade the quality as much as it possibly can so that it can easily be transmitted over the internet. It's much better to have those large format files and lossless files files like a FLAC format. All right, number four, enclosures, how they worked, how important they were, how to have built them, that would have changed everything. I totally agree here, box style really matters. A couple of things to pay attention to, you wanna make sure that you analyze whether a subwoofer is better suited for a sealed or a ported enclosure. And this is the biggest one by far here, the most common mistake I see made. You wanna make sure that you have a subwoofer in the proper air volume that it is designed for. Whether it's sealed or ported, you wanna calculate the size of your enclosure when you're building a custom box, or even when you're picking a prefabricated enclosure, you want to make sure that you match the subwoofer up with a proper air volume. All too often, people will take a subwoofer and put it in a space that is far too small, making it impossible for that subwoofer to perform optimally. It's also worth noting here, because I've seen this mistake too, you can't just take a box and cut a hole in it and have it be ported. That port has to have a particular cross-sectional area. It also needs to have a particular length that corresponds with its tuning, that corresponds with its internal air volume. There's a lot to go into here. And I wanna point out here, we can't get into the details of explaining each of these things or this video would be far too long, but I've made a ton of videos on the channel and I'm actually going to link ones that correspond to each of our points down in the video description. Number five, the importance of electrical. Now there's a couple of big points to make here. First of all, it takes power to make power. You can't take a 20,000 watt amplifier and just expect that your tiny little factory alternator is going to provide enough current to the amplifier to produce that 20,000 watts. The wiring is also super important. You can't expect that you're gonna take a little 16 gauge power wire and use that to run an amplifier that requires a ton of power. You're not going to be able to have all that current going through the wire without it starting on fire. 
The other big one here is proper fusing techniques. When you install an amplifier, you need to have a fuse on that connection between the battery and the amplifier. And a lot of people think that that fuse is meant to protect the amplifier, but that's not actually the case. It's meant to protect the wiring. If the wiring shorts out, we don't want the wiring to have infinite current shorted to the battery and start on fire we want that fuse to blow instead again if you guys want to see full details on everything i'm talking about here i have a related video down below number six tuning with proper tools and not just by ear now, of course, what your ears hear is important, but when it comes to adjusting the gain on our amplifier or making sure that we're adjusting to a target curve, we want to use a good quality set of tools in order to do so. Now, I understand if you're only doing one install into one car, it probably doesn't make sense to make a big investment into a bunch of tools in order to tune that system. So a couple of suggestions for you when you're looking for an amplifier, look for one that has a feature that allows you to set the gain and it has a light that will illuminate when it detects the clipping. Also, there are tuning microphones out there that you can use with just your phone. So if you're on a budget, I'd recommend checking out those things as well. Number seven, I've always known about sound deadening, but it didn't really hit me on how important it was until I actually installed it. It makes a world of difference. It can almost make factory speakers sound halfway decent. Definitely true, sound treatment is not a waste of money. I think that there's this idea that, you know, I want my music to be loud, so why would I install something that's going to make the noise go away? Because it makes the noise go away, not your audio, it makes the noise reduced. With proper sound treatment, we get rid of annoying vibrations and resonant noises, and we can also reduce the noise floor in the vehicle, which means we don't have to play the speakers as loud for them to sound as loud to our ear. Number eight, how to identify a good grounding point for amps. This is definitely another common one when we get started with car audio. People don't understand the importance of the ground wire connected to your amplifiers and other gear. It's easy to think, okay, I want a big power wire coming into my amplifier because, you know, it's going to be making a bunch of power, but, you know, after the power has been used by the amplifier, it's not as important, so we can have a smaller ground wire. That's not the case. You have to remember in an electrical system, it's all about the full circuit, the full signal path. So if we have a big power wire coming into our amplifier, we also need a big ground wire coming out of the amplifier. We also need to be very sure that the ground wire is a good ground. You can't just go and connect to some random screw in the vehicle. You need to properly test each of these locations that you plan to use. And if there's not a good location to use, we need to make a good ground ground location. Again, full details on how to do all that down below. Now, number nine of things I wished I knew before I got started is what I like to call buy once, cry once. When you start your car audio journey, you're no doubt going to be picking out different gear. So you're going to be making comparisons between different gear. And it can be easy to see, okay, this amplifier makes 100 watts RMS and this one makes 100 watts RMS, but this one's less expensive, so I should go with the less expensive one, right? That's not always the case. You need to do your research because the more expensive amplifier might be more expensive for a reason. Perhaps it's made of better components. Perhaps it has better reliability. Perhaps it's going to sound a lot better. My point here is do some research. Don't just purchase on price alone. Now, number 10, and I want to highlight the final part of his comment here. Lastly, how many tools you really need. This is important to know so that you don't get in over your head. Back in the day, 20 years ago, you could absolutely install a full car audio system with just a few tools. But today's latest vehicles are definitely more complex and you typically need a little bit more of a tool selection. If you're familiar with working on vehicles, odds are you're going to have the right tools, you're going to be good to go. But I just wanted to bring up this point because you can no longer go in with just a screwdriver and install a full car audio system. Now again, if you are new to car audio, this is just kind of a shameless plug for the channel, but I have made over 400 some videos here now that go into detail on each of these different topics here on the channel. So I definitely recommend checking out those videos if you guys would like to learn more. Next time you are picking out the gear for a car audio system, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield. They make it a lot easier to determine what exactly you need and to complete the process. Take advantage of a special offer for Car Audio Fabrication fans at the link on screen or down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Mo, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.